Okay, hello everybody. My name is Dmitry Lodonov. I'm curator of Art Reports at the Manchester Museum, responsible for all sorts of creepy crawlies. And today we have a special guest, Ian and Angela, artist working with us on a particular project. And we are going to talk about one particular species from our collection, which is called Giant Airwig, which is uh, one of the extinct species of uh, airwigs. And Angela and Ian are very curious about this subject and they want to ask me some questions, I guess. That's right. <laughs> so which, where are these from? Are they from the same place? Uh, they used to be from different places, but yeah. giant airwig is an airwig which used to live on only one particular place on Earth. St. Helena Island, where Napoleon was exiled yeah. to. So oh, this right. is the place. Yeah. Yeah. So, so such animals are called endemics. Endemics are animals or plants which are very strictly uh, confined to one particular, usually small area on Earth, particular mountain, particular island, and so on. So this was a typical island species, which was restricted, its distribution was restricted by one particular island. Okay. And was this chap here, was this introduced by... By, uh, yeah, when, when, when men uh, started coming to this island, particularly in the mid 16th century, they started bringing animals with, with, with them, yeah. various animals like mice, rats, and, and also cats, and so on. And then occasionally it introduced this creature, which is called centipede, right. also a rather, rather big centipede. This is a ferocious predator. Right. They, they are predators, they predate other invertebrates, they catch them, they kill them, and they eat them have strong pairs of jaws they use for killing. Uh, uh, so, so you say it's introduced, that's not something they bring on purpose, does that come by accident? Then? Uh, uh, yeah. most, most probably yes, because it's very difficult to imagine that any of us could handle and bring it on by, by yeah. purpose. It was brought with goods, with something, maybe with uh, timbers, with, with, with some sort of materials. Where did this come from then? Uh, this most probably came from the Mediterranean, because they, they suppose that the species which is responsible for uh, killing this uh, animal is called Scolopendra morzitans. Uh, I think it's originally distributed in, in the Mediterranean area. So, is there any other earwig under threat because of the introduction of this centipede? It's difficult to say, because there are only few few stories which are properly recorded, so we don't know. So, most probably the answer is yes, yeah. but, but how could we prove this? Because it's, it's very easy to talk about uh, threatened birds, tigers, pandas, you know, the big animals. Everyone knows about this, but small creepy crawlers, it's, <laughs> no, it's no. much more difficult to say. <laughs> so, how old are these samples? These samples uh, are about uh, 30 years old. I think they were, there, is, there are labels uh, saying that... Oh, the, yeah, underneath, yeah. Underneath the label, labels uh, saying that they were collected in 1966. Right. So, so more, more than 40 to 50 years. At that time, by the way, uh, mid and late 60s, this creature was quite abundant here. So oh, so it's a recent it, it, it's, it's a very recent uh, uh, extinction. It was actually announced as extinct species only two or three years ago. Oh, gosh. Oh, really? So it's, it's a historic extinction, and we are fully responsible, we as, as, as a mm -hmm. biological species, fully responsible for, for, for this. Right. So is that still living on St. Helena? Uh, yes, yes so it what is. What does it eat now? Uh, there are some other insects, of course, they are right. particularly restricted to, to this diet, but right. these species had no protection from them, and this I is, see. This is what, what, what happened. So we've got yeah. pincers on the end, and uh, is that not good enough to keep one of them away? Uh, no, the, the, nobody knows what function of this princess is. Oh. Of course, if, oh. if you grab it, if you take it, any airwig species, they try to use these forceps to protect themselves, yeah. because they're not strong enough to pierce you or to cut no. your skin. Some people say that they use them for uh, to help for uh, their second pair of wings to fold up. Because these creatures, if you notice here, they have short first pair of wings, and underneath there should be second pair of wings, which ah. are folded up. And whether they use them for flying or not, I don't know. Maybe this particular species didn't fly. But the, the, the uh, story tells that many species of airwigs, they use their forceps actually to fold up the flying wings oh, and put them underneath the wing case. Like an extra pair of arms. Yes. Wow. Would, you, would this species be of any inspiration for you, like that is? Well, yeah, because of the um, extinction kind of uh, circle. Of man's yes. ability to, to disrupt the life cycle of these. Yeah, so that, that affects what, what we're doing. We're looking at the insect's reaction to man. So. 
kind of fighting back against it, fighting back against... The How they can evolve very quickly, or not evolve, but through natural selection, to, to exist in an urban environment, possibly, but with an artistic slant that will make it slightly... Um, Less scientific. Of course, less, less scientific is good. You so have to bring some emotions and, and reflections yeah. which are useful for people to understand what is going on. Because sometimes, let's say, dry scientific facts are not good enough to yes. persuade founding bodies to do something. So by the introduction of this centipede and the reduction of this earwig, does that affect the life cycle of other animals on the island? It's Somebody, something else that would... Be a predator it, for it, it's it's very difficult to say because such a, uh, the, the simple answer require a very extended yeah. scientific <laughs> <Fair> <laughs> you know, for, uh, yes. research. So you 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 can you cannot say yet. Yeah, well, again, short answer would be yes, but we don't know in what particular way could this. So what end. would the earwig have eaten? What would the food be? Uh, they feed on, on, on various stuff. They 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 so sort of omnivorous. They used to feed all air weeks. They can feed on on uh, various organic matters. Right. So that will uh, have an effect on those organic matters. It, it, it should. It should, should have effect. It should have effect. Of course, yeah. then, uh, 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 nature is very resilient. Mm. If something disappears, its room is taken by another species. It, it, it includes us. So, if it, yeah. Yeah. so it's very easy that so the room we are, we, are, we are holding now will be taken by some, something else, someone else. Well, so the same here. It relates to us in the fact that if, if these could have evolved faster, they might have beaten off that. You know, if they camouflage themselves better or start to uh, fade into the background of, of the new backgrounds that were coming, such as the wood that the, the, the humans were bringing, such as the, the ships and all the... All the yeah, well, in theory, buildings. in theory, yes. In practice, unfortunately, evolution no. takes much but, longer time. But that relates to us, what we're but, looking but at. The yeah. si by the same subject, this uh, chap has come from the Mediterranean to St Helena. How do we know that this little chap hasn't gone by the same process somewhere else and started to affect the habitat there. We yes. don't know that. Yeah, yet. No, no, we don't. No, we don't know many things. Because the reflex. <laughs> we, we, yeah, we, we, can, we, we can simply record what, what has happened. Mm. Or what we know is, yeah. is, is a fact. Yeah. For instance, f regarding this particular species, we should be honest because uh, uh, us, as, as, as another species, uh, human beings, people try to save them. Because the trend was recognized, the introduction of aliens uh, was, it? was right. recognized, and I know that London Zoo undertook two or three special expeditions to go to Saint Helena Island right. in order to find this creature, to to get a pair or maybe a few breeding pairs to, breed. to keep them in captivity. They failed; they could not find them. But people, uh, pe people still believe there is this big fate in, in, in all this story. That there may be somewhere in deep crevices, somewhere in the remote hiding away. Yeah, hiding away, they're still prevalent. there. Yeah. They're still there. Camouflage. Well, That's a nice idea. <laughs> and, and, and also, officially, it was announced as extinct species. The hope should always be, be with us. Yes. And do you think that they have less... Um, because they're, they are creepy crawlies and not cuddly pandas, that there is less interest in preserving these kind of creatures than the than the bigger mammals. Yes, I think so. For for instance, I don't know what sort of emotional response you would generate that if you saw this uh, creature crawling across you know from floor in front of you, yeah. most probably very negativistic uh, mm -hmm. re reaction, as many people do. And for for Eric, there are so so many superstitions and yes. many yeah. negative, yes. uh, negative uh, opinions. That yes, I would say that of course it's less say, um, highlighted in terms yeah. of protection. It's, it's a one story, so people generally dislike alien stuff. Panda, mm -hmm. tiger, they are a lot more yes. related, so mm -hmm. they like them. Aesthetically more appealing for the majority of, of us. This are less aesthetically appealing, so we need maybe to more understand about them in order to, if not to laugh, to, to speak, but at least to apprehend them. Yeah, they exist and they have a purpose. Yeah, they have a purpose. But another, another reason is that uh, conservation efforts related to insects should be done in slightly different way. So we cannot protect one particular species of bug. It's impossible. We need to protect habitat. 
Right. And it's also true for big animals, for panda, for mm. instance, if they, they live in bamboo forest in very restricted uh, mountain areas of mm. central China, they feed only on bamboo. And whatever we do, if we uh, fence this area around, then what will happen? They will st live as if in captivity. So, but so habitat should 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 be left for for, for yes. animals or for for birds to, to live, and this is very true for insects. If you want to protect them, you need to make sure that there is a suitable and the right habitat, full of the right vegetation, and in particular mm -hmm. the site of the earth, you know, and so and so on. So yeah. on. And nothing added, and nothing taken away. <laughs> yes, 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 and yes. Unfortunately, so many things have already been added and uh, taken away, and the uh, habitat mm -hmm. were damaged. Um, yeah. So we 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 now we now we are dealing with basically consequences of our own existence for the last two hundred yeah. years. Mm -hmm. This is what generated the most most uh, uh, species loss. Mm 